Welcome to the Land of House channel. I'm Seth. About two months ago, I installed the EG418K hybrid inverter with the Big Battery Ethos 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. I did that to power my house off grid. I have been very pleased with this system. I actually opened up the app and realized that I have brought in a half megawatt of solar into the system in the past two months. So I thought now would be a great time to show you an overview of the whole system, starting from the solar panels up here, going to the inverter battery, and then talking about the loads that I have on this system. So let's go ahead and check out the solar panels first. As you can see behind me, I have three different solar arrays. Each of these is three kilowatts, and so I have a total of nine kilowatts of solar going to the house. Let's step up to the very top one up here, and I'll show you what the mounting system looks like and how the panels are wired together. Each of my three arrays has 12 solar panels, and that equals up to 3,000 watts per array for a total of 9,000 watts. The 12 panels are facing south to get the most sun, and I'm using a wooden mounting rack. So I've got six four x four posts sunk into the ground, about two feet, with a two x six across the top. I created my own bracket here. I've got some all thread with an aluminum bar and then unistrut 10 foot long. Each panel just has nut and bolt with some washers to attach to that. I find the 10 foot long unistrut is perfect for holding uh, three panels in a row. So in order to get these wired up, I have them in series, which means the positive of one panel goes to the negative of the next and continues down until I have just one positive, one negative overall for the entire system. And that gives me right at 450 volts going into my charge controllers. Now, if you'll notice over here, I do have the panels linked together, and that's for ground. Having an earth ground on your solar panels is actually very important. There was a storm that blew through before I had the earth ground connected, and some lightning somewhere struck, and it knocked out my inverter system for a little while because I did not have earth ground. Once I added that, I've had multiple storms, and there have been no issues with that uh, going out in the house. So. Make sure you put an earth ground on your solar panels. Once all the panels have been connected together in series, I have one positive, one negative. That connects to some 10 gauge solar wire, which goes into a conduit down to the house. The solar power comes into the house and goes to these three different breakers, one for each of the solar arrays. So I can flip these if I need to for maintenance or safety. So definitely important to have the breakers for your solar power. Underneath the inverter, I have three different bulbs with a blue glowing light inside. These are midnight solar surge protectors rated at 600 volts. So in theory, if there was ever a power surge from the solar outside, these would stop that and not damage the inverter or the batteries. This big box right here is the EG418K hybrid inverter. It is a very impressive inverter. It has tons of features. It can accept 18,000 watts of solar input, has the ability to output 12,000 watts of AC power. It has UPS features, grid tie, grid tie limiter. It can do peak shaving or in my case, off grid. So let's go ahead and take a look at the inverter and I will show you some of its features here. Let's start off by opening up this inverter. Now it has clamps on the side which are lockable for safety. You can open this door and see all of the internal connections here. So starting off with solar, it has three different MPPT charge controller inputs. However, number one is a bit special. It's got two inputs on it for a 25 amp versus two and three which are 15 amp. The smaller wires here are actually going down to those surge protectors and those just clip right into where the solar input is as well. Now the blue cable up here is the communication port to the batteries. Speaking of batteries, I've got the positives and negatives connected to these terminals over here. And up here, there is a breaker to turn off the battery. And if we move over here, I've got nothing on the generator. This is the loads going to my critical load panel to power the house and then the grid connection, which I have turned off at the moment, but if for some reason I had to charge the batteries without solar, I could turn this on and charge. And then of course up here is the load breaker to turn that off. 
All right, so that's the basics that we're gonna go through here on the inside of the inverter. Now I could also turn off the solar by using this switch right over here. And there's also a Wi-Fi dongle located down here. Let's take a look at the screen here on the EG418K. The first numbers up here are the solar input. My uh, panels on array number one have full sun, or almost full sun, and it's got a thousand watts coming in. Down here there's 380 and 192 because those are still partially shaded. 86% on the battery right down here and it's being charged at 1,550 watts. The house is currently using 231 watts. And then we've got some information over here. On this side, you can see 507 kilowatt hours for the solar yield and the charging 291. And then down here at the bottom, you can see the house has consumed 308 kilowatt hours in two months. Pretty impressive. So this battery will be charged here in about one hour because when the sun gets uh, full on these panels up here, it'll charge. Uh, we're probably looking at four to 5,000 watts easy coming in. Now the inverter has tons of data you can get into. You can see charts for the solar or battery or the UPS or all kinds of stuff in there. If you move over here, you can see the alarms. We've got no faults, which is great. And if you move over here, there are tons of settings you can change to uh, fit your needs with all of these uh, in here. This is my main house panel breaker, and I have removed breakers from in here and put them into a critical loads panel and moved the wires over. So everything you see in here is running completely off the grid. I've got my clothes dryer, my washer, I've got the refrigerator, well pump, dishwasher, microwave, and then all the bedrooms up there as well and bathrooms. So it's so nice to have all of these things. So let's say the power's out, I can still have water, I can have a refrigerator, I can still dry clothes if I need to, and uh, it's just so nice to have all this stuff isolated and off the grid. Now I do have a few circuits that are still using grid power. The HVAC system, it uses a lot of power, especially in the winter time. The water heater also uses a good bit of power, and then my range or cooktop in here also can use up to 5,000 watts. So you have to keep in mind the size of the batteries you have, the solar panels, but also the inverter can only do 12,000 watts. So if I had the clothes dryer going at 4,000 watts, the well pump on at 1,000, a hair dryer, and maybe the refrigerator kicks on, if I were to have all that going and then turn on my cook stove and it pops at 5,000 watts, it would um, reset the inverter, so it'd be too much. Um, so, and also my HVAC system in the winter time has heat strips for auxiliary power and it uses just ridiculous amounts of power. So uh, those are the three things I keep that are on the grid power. In the two months time that I've had the EG418K installed, I've only had one problem. One day, the inverter shut off and restarted, and the error code on this said that it had a solar power over voltage. So for some reason, the voltage crept up over 500 or 600 volts, and it's not happened again, and so I'm not really sure what's going on. I do question if in the winter time, when my solar panels are running at a higher voltage, I may have that issue reoccur. If it does, I will wire up my panels to be in series parallel instead of just in series, and that will drop the voltage down and increase the amperage just a little bit. But um, I'll see if that happens again. Hopefully it doesn't. So the positive things about this inverter, one of the top things for me is the sound. Totally quiet unless it has 6,000 watts either going out of it or going into it. The next thing is that it has an idle consumption power of only 50 to 70 watts. That is amazing. My previous whole house inverter used 130 watts at idle, and then whatever else you had running off of that would just increase more and more. So definitely pulls the battery down, but with this thing, it's so nice because that 50 watts, you barely see a change in your batteries overnight. I've seen up to 7,500 watts of solar feeding this inverter so far with my system. It charges the batteries very quickly. Now I did increase my batteries from 15K to 20K 
and that has also been good. It's allowed me to hook up my clothes dryer to this system, and so far things are going very smoothly. I will have a link to both the EG418K and the Ethos batteries in the description down below. Those are affiliate links to Signature Solar, and they have a whole bunch of different products you can look at. Um, but the EG418K, honestly, is the best inverter out there at the moment. So be sure to check it out. The price tag is a little high, but it will be well worth the money spent to have such an awesome inverter. I'm Seth with Land the House, and I will see you in the next video.